Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to thank the organizers. Uh, really enjoyed the conference and been really great. So I guess what I want to tell you about today, I guess we saw in the lectures that you can associate these different invariants to rings, such as um, the F signature and detects, um, you know, when your ring is uh, strongly F rational or strongly F regular. And so there's this another invariant that you can associate to a uh, ring, which is called the F peer threshold. And at least when you're a hypersurface or complete intersection, uh, it's telling you when your it characterizes um, the ring being F peer. And I'm just going to define that for you. So this invariant was originally introduced by uh, Professor Takagi and Watanabe. And then there's an equivalent formulation called F threshold, which is later introduced by uh, Professor Murcha, Takagi, and Watanabe. So I'm just going to call that for you. So uh, this is definition and theorem, if you want. So let I be an ideal contained in the homogeneous maximal ideal of a polynomial ring. And so you can do this more generally if you'd like, but I'm just going to look at this case right here. And so if for each T uh, natural number, I wanted to find this invariant uh, new T of I, and that's going to be the largest R, which is a natural number, such that I to the R is not in the Frobenius power of the maximal ideal. Uh, so the T, T for being used power. Let me recall you what that is. So that's just, you take the generators and you raise them all to the P to the T power. Okay. Okay. And so then the F threshold of I is just equal to this limit, uh, T goes to infinity of New, new t of i over p of t. And so the theorem is that this exists. And so what's interesting about this is it has uh, relationships to uh, invariance in characteristic zero. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, has relations to so called log canonical threshold. And so I'm just going to say that briefly. Uh, let me put it right here. So if, for example, you took K, I should say here K is characteristic P. If, for example, you defined your ideal over the integers, you can base change to different prime fields or the complex numbers. Um, so if you took your ideal finding it over the complex numbers after base changing, then um, it's just the same as the limit as P goes to infinity of that threshold of I of P. And this is where you took your ideal to find over uh, the integers and you base changed to Z mod P uh, or did reduction mod P. And so what this is saying is you can get a handle on these and get a handle on the log canonical threshold. And so that's, um, now I'm gonna tell you I guess changed gears a little bit and um, oh, is this full screen? Okay. Change gears and tell you about a linear program. And I'll tell you about how this linear program uh, relates to F thresholds. So a uh, linear program, you basically have some linear set of constraints and you have some linear function that you either want to uh, say maximize over the um, uh, over the solutions over the uh, points that satisfy the constraints. So here's an example. If you take these constraints, you get some polytope in R two, or um, and you, then if you want to maximize it, you can uh, let your x one x two. I mean, you could say maximize over x one x two are integers or rationals, and you get different, um, you can get different uh, answers depending on 
if you let your x1, x2 be integers or rationals. So for here in this one, if you require the x1, x2 are rationals, then you actually get zero. But if you say let x1, x, sorry, x1, x2, you solve it over the integers, you maximize, you, you require the x1, x2 are, have to be integers, then zero is the maximum of this. But if you say let x1, x2 uh, can take rational values, then uh, the sum of these uh, is the maximum. And so I guess um, to any linear program that you can put in this form, which I'll just say is primal, uh, there's a so-called dual linear program. And the dual, you basically, the idea is roughly you're in changing the um, constraints with the uh, um, uh, I guess variables showing up. Okay, and so now I just want to briefly sketch for you. Um, I'm going to tell you something how this goes in my monomial ideals and motivate 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 the story for you in monomial ideals, such that I can then tell you what happens in binomial edge ideals. So, um, as Professor Mondel was telling us in the last lecture, we can uh, to any graph, oh, say it's finite simple. We've labeled the vertices. Um, one through n, we can associate a monomial ideal to it, it's called edge ideal. And we just do that by um, whenever there's an edge, we just look at this product x1, x2, and so on. And so, how might you devise a linear program to compute that threshold of mon monomial ideal? So, let's just let me take that. And so the idea is um, here we have uh, six generators. So let's say we think of A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Uh, we're thinking of these as some integers. And we want to basically represent like what's a generic um, monomial after we do some expansion where these are allowed to vary. And so if you do that, if you write out what the product is, you have X1, X2 to the A times let me call this product capital F, X2, X3 to the B, so on. And then times this last one, X5, X6 to the F. And so this condition um, over here is telling you that when you expand this out, the degree of X1 appearing in F as a most p of the t. So you have that the degree of respect to x1 of f, which is just a is less than or equal to p of the t. Um, if, you're, if you're supposing that this is not in the Frobenius power, this Frobenius power. Okay. And then so when you look at the other degrees, degree x2 f, and then a plus B plus C. That should be less than, uh, less than T and so on. And so this would give you, um, you could say maximize A plus B plus B or C, whatever, maximize A plus B plus, plus F. Uh, subject to, and then these are all uh, non negative integers. And then you enforce those conditions. So A is less than P of the T, B is less than that thing. Um, sorry, A plus B plus C, less than P of the T and so on of the other ones. And so this tells you that this new T of I of this particular ideal this net is less, is bounded above by the maximum of this linear program. And so get my other color chalk. If you, we said that threshold, you have to divide by P of the T and you take some limit. So, 
if you modify the linear program, you might um, apply by P of T, you can show that you get this uh, as an upper bound for the F threshold. And now this you have to replace by Q. And so actually you get a quality and you can show that. Um, and so more generally, if uh, you take monomial, oh, sorry. Okay. More generally, if you take, um, I guess, this uh, monomial, a monomial ideal, and you take the exponent vectors and put as columns, um, then to, if you have indeterminates corresponding to the number of edges, you maximize the sum of the uh, indeterminates, which is this part, and then you subject uh, this relation right here. You could, rep um, that's just this part right here. That uh, linear program, actually, when you solve it over the rationals uh, is computing the yeah, threshold. And, but even, even more is true, which is kind of amazing, which gives a connection, um, I guess, which is what wants to generalize. I'm gonna put that right here. So, and let me call this, okay. Um, so and the connection uh, is, so you have linear program on one side. Over here, you have some combinatorics you understand, and then, yeah some one understanding connection between algebra. And so you could also solve this over the rationals, or as I mentioned at the beginning, you can take some dual of this one. And the algebra connection is here you get monomial grade. Uh, here you get maximal matching, maximal matching, size of maximal matching. Um, here you get either F threshold, log canonical threshold, they're equal this is for minimal ideals. Uh, here, you, what's called fractional maximal matching. And then the dual, you actually just get the height of the ideal. Um, and it's a uh, size of a minimal vertex cover. And it turns out that this right here uh, admits a, at least a partial generalization to binomial edge ideals. And that's what I want to tell you about next. So binomial edge ideal, same setup. You just start with a graph, a simple label of vertices. But this time, each time there's an edge, ij, you associate the binomial xi, yj minus yj, xi for every edge of the graph. And then you take that, um, take that ideal, and you want to study like, how's algebra and combinatorics relate. And so um, I'm going to skip this for now. Basically, uh, there's some nice class of graph called a block graph, but um, somewhat resembling, uh, it's not important too much. Uh, so what I want to tell you about is that there's this concept called maximal path packing inside a graph. And it's maybe what you suspect it is. It's how do you put the largest number of paths inside my graph? So they're vertex disjoint. Um, and so hopefully it's clear from the picture. Uh, Pat's just what you think it is. And it turns out, um, okay, so maybe you're kind of motivated. You, you want to be like, how do I compute the F threshold or log canonical threshold binomial edge ideal? And so I'm going to say there's some linear program that is doing that. And where is this linear program coming from? So for each edge, we associate a variable. This right here is similar to what we did here. It's capturing that there's like degree relations. And the reason there's a two is that um, in your binomial edge ideal, you have both XV and YV showing up. Um, and you're uh, summing over the, uh, I guess each, each vertex basically has two variables um, that 
give a degree degree piece, degree X V piece and degree Y V P Y V piece. And then where's this condition come from? Well, that condition comes from uh, there's some result of uh, Lance Miller, Anurag Singh, and Matteo Barbaro, which says that if you take the uh, two by two minors of a two by n matrix of indeterminates, uh, and you want to compute the f threshold of that, um, it's actually equal to n minus one, independent of characteristic. And so that means you need to enforce this condition on every sub oh, every induced subgraph of your graph if you want to have a chance of um, bounding that threshold. And so you can show that the maximum value subject to these conditions gives you a bound for the F threshold. Um, and actually, it captures more combinatorial data. So if you solve this over the integers, you recover path packing. This right here says at each vertex, you have at most, um, each vertex, there's at most like two paths that meet. And then this condition right here is saying that there can be no cycles, rules out cycles. And so then you can um, basically do a similar thing as you did over there. You can write down what's the, how, how's the linear program like the commute algebra and the common torques. And uh, the answer is, so if you solve that linear program of integers, you do binomial grade, combinatorially it's maximal path packing. If you solve it with the rationals, it's a log canonical threshold or conjecture at least. And I, I can show that for some special cases, um, which you might call rational path packing. And if you look at the dual, actually, you actually recover the height of the binomial edge ideal. And combinatorially it corresponds to like covering your graph by um, certain subgraphs where you've assigned some weight and you're trying to minimize this weight. Um, just want to check how much, how am I doing on time? No, oh, we're, we're almost done? Finish, okay, I'll just say it, so thank you. Um, yeah, so the conjecture is uh, uh, this path packing number is equal, uh, when you solve the rationals log canonical threshold and can actually uh, show th that conjecture um, when G is a block graph and actually show even a bit more that the F threshold agrees with the um, log canonical threshold, which is equal to path pack only and uh, is half rational. So, yeah, thank you. कहां से करनी है